Good morning guys, back to Goodwood today. Spent the night with Koenigsegg and the event was absolutely insane, but just look at the parking lot right now in the morning. I'm exhausted, didn't go to bed till late and it is super early right now, but there is a ridiculous lineup of Koenigseggs in a row. I mean, how ridiculous is this? All these cars covered in morning dew. Oh my gosh, literally every spec and model of Koenigsegg you can imagine all lined up in a row. Look at this green exposed carbon fiber, that's crazy. How nuts is this? The event opened one minute ago. It's 7.01 and it's literally already packed. So if you've never been to Goodwood, it's big. So wear comfortable shoes. My feet already hurt and it's day one of four. So it's funny, a lot of people commented in the last video, how did I just casually end it with a GT1 in the background and not talk about the car? That's because I wanted to have a dedicated video to this other section of Goodwood that we haven't explored yet. We're at the Cartier lawn now, taking a look at this gorgeous Porsche GT1. This is an ultimate dream car to drive. I can't even imagine. Look at that integrated roof scoop in the roof there. That massive rear wing, such a crazy looking car. You can see kind of the original 911 body inside of it with those wide fenders. Now coming around to this beautiful Bugatti EB110, these cars have grown on me so much in recent years. Look at that crazy quad exhaust, those retro taillights and this gorgeous Lamborghini Diablo. The Diablo GT is super rare. One of the craziest cars I've ever reviewed. I drove a blue one and it was absolutely savage. I love the intake on the front hood there and of course the roof scoop. How crazy is this? The Nissan R390 styled by the people who made the XJ220. It's got a twin turbocharged V8 making over 600 horsepower and the design language is absolutely incredible. Now of course the icon, we got to see this go around the track the other day in the rain which was incredible. The McLaren F1, still one of the ultimate cars that hopefully someday I can get to review. It just looks so classy, so beautiful. Look at the cream interior. Interior. What a spectacular looking car. And I love the fact that at Goodwood, there's no ropes around this. This is a 20, 30 million dollar car and you can just walk up to it and people are actually respectful and don't touch the car and play with it. Now, another absolutely insane car that somehow we've seen multiple of in the last couple of days, the CLK GTR. This is just an absolute monster. We actually saw a Roadster, which is super, super rare, at the track the other day. Next to it, another car of a similar ilk, the Maserati MC12, based on the Enzo. I think this might actually look cooler than a Ferrari Enzo, particularly these little strakes right here in the front hood are so darn awesome. I imagine driving one of these is absolutely insane. There are so many incredible cars at this event that it really is difficult to capture everything. We've got this beautiful 918 Spider in a very, very interesting livery. Okay, here's something I've never seen before. You guys have heard of the company Zagato. Well, they actually made five Carrera GTZs. As you'll notice, the front bumper area is a little bit different. Imagine customizing your Carrera GT. That is pretty cool, as if that car isn't special enough already. Some differences in the back end up here, as well as the exhaust area. That is insane. Once again, never seen this car in my entire life. Now, how's this for something absolutely insane? A 962 CR, which is a road-going version, street legal of the 962. Some of the craziest looking design language ever. Wow, that is unbelievable. Look at that rear wing. One of the original supercars, the Porsche 959. These things do not get old. Such a classy looking design. I love the intake that they had on the 993 Turbo S after it. So awesome. Singer dropped the bomb with an incredibly cool new car, the DLS Turbo Study. Check this out. Kind of a retro modern version of the 935 based on the 964. It's got a 3.8 liter twin turbocharged flat six making 700 horsepower. Comes with a manual transmission and a price tag of $1.8 million. Check this out. You can get a look at the engine. That is absolutely insane. What do you guys think? This is one of the coolest looking cars I have seen in a very, very long time. Singer always kills it with the design, usually a little bit more subdued, but this, I mean, this is something else. And in case that wasn't extreme enough for you, look at this Bugatti Bolide in a glass case. We got to see the Bolide run up the hill climb yesterday, but look how cool this looks in painted light blue. I mean, <laughs> it doesn't get much more wild than this. One of the craziest parts is those rear taillights. 
Look at that X design. In the BMW area now, pretty cool display. And something I had no idea of, their first electric car was in 1972 with the 1602E. Pretty darn cool. And a bunch of electric cars over the years that I haven't seen. Taking a look at the new BMW 5 Series for the first time, this is the all-electric i5. First time getting to see the Puro Sangue SUV up close and personal at Goodwood Festival of Speed. Pretty cool that this is the pace car. A V12 naturally aspirated SUV with suicide doors is a pretty spectacular thing. I can't believe they actually made this. Unlike Lamborghini that went with the conservative engine option with the twin turbocharged V8, putting a V12 in an SUV is insane. I think it looks a lot cooler than a Urus as well. That's gotta be my favorite SUV. Okay, this is incredible. We've got Oatopia and the Utopia. I have to say, in full exposed carbon fiber, the Utopia is a heck of a lot more beautiful than the launch spec. Look at that cream interior with the woven seats. The matte carbon looks absolutely insane. That interior is pretty darn spectacular. And then casually sitting outside next to it, the track only exposed carbon fiber Wyra R. Imagine having a track car with this beautiful level of exposed carbon fiber. I mean, that takes some serious balls driving a car on the track that's this pristine on the outside, but I imagine the lucky few who can afford these cars, you know what, why not? The exhaust tips in white, so darn cool. The shape of this roof scoop with the little ridge on the top is just to die for. This car is insane and those gold wheels. All right, I gotta say, in person, the Folgore, the all-electric version of the Gran Turismo, actually looks really cool. And I didn't realize it has 761 horsepower. The wheel design is pretty awesome. And while in pictures it looks a lot more like the standard Gran Turismo, the shape in person is radically different. Take a little peek into the interior. This event is so big, it's actually ridiculous. I believe this is the third video I've posted and we haven't seen any of this stuff yet. Look at that, the Gordon Murray T33 Spider, kind of the entry level version to the T50, still with 617 horsepower and an 11,000 RPM naturally aspirated V12. Two seats instead of three. Really cool design language. P1 GTR opened up, so we're at Lanzante, an incredible company that turns these GTRs into road legal conversions. Let's take a look at one of these road legal versions over here. That is just absolutely spectacular. The color combination on that with the kind of wine reddish purple and that beautiful cream and purple interior for the P1 GT. I mean, look at the rear end of this and those tailpipes. And then if we take a look at what started off as a P1 GTR and it's halfway taken apart. This is really, really cool to see. Look how awesome that interior is and that steering wheel. And look at this Tag Turbo. This is absolutely gorgeous. I like the livery on it too. And then we've got a P1 high downforce kit an awesome Marlboro style livery. As if the P1 wasn't already cool enough, Lanzante cut the roof off of this P1, making a one of one P1 Spider with an absolutely insane interior. First time seeing the Utopia in person, the replacement to the Wyra. It's got a twin turbocharged V12 making 864 horsepower, 2,800 pounds. And after driving the BC Roadster about a week ago, I can't imagine the extra power and a similar weight. Very interesting design language. It's kind of retro modern. Cool to see it opened up in the front. Check this out. They're opening the front clamshell of the Utopia. Little peek of the engine area of the T50, that Cosworth V12. Gold foil like the McLaren F1. That is so cool. And then I'm actually not sure, but I'd assume that this is a luggage compartment in the side of the car. How crazy is that? All right, guys, how insane is this? The Lamborghini SC63 for the FIA World Endurance Championship. Lamborghini just unveiled this. 671 horsepower, 211 mile an hour top speed, and some of the coolest looks I have ever seen. It's awesome to see these supercar manufacturers getting back into racing. It's cool to see some of the styling from the road car. We got the kind of Sion style Y-shaped headlights right there that they brought to the Revuelto. 
kind of an STO style roof scoop on the top and that shark fin in the back is absolutely insane. I love the fact that the top of the fenders are completely exposed right here. So you can see onto those racing slicks and then look at the slats to release turbulent airflow out of that wheel well. The aerodynamics of this car are really impressive. And then like the front end, we've got those Sion style Y-shaped tail lights as well. And then hexagonal brake lights in the middle there. What a good looking car. They've got a second Revuelto up on the stand with a little more space to go around the rear end of the car to show off that crazy rear diffuser, the Y-shaped tail lights. Similarities between this and the race car, of course, a little bit more toned down. I'm still in love with that exhaust and this exposed engine bay. Perfect example of, I guess it is okay because it's going to pour rain today and there is no glass over that engine bay. Hopefully we can get a look at the interior uh, at some point this week. I'm not gonna lie though, I don't think I like this car in orange and the front end, it doesn't feel like it has wide hips like the previous generation Murcielago or Aventador. Getting to see another colored Revuelto, I think I like it more in white. Notice this doesn't have the appearance package like the orange one, so these are body colored right here for the headlights as opposed to painted black. I think that looks a lot better. Look at this Polestar electric roadster concept. That is an extremely good looking car. They need to build this thing. Really unique design, kind of squared off but also rounded at the same time. I am in love with the way this looks. So here's an electric car I haven't heard of, the Hi-Fi Z. The little screens in the front are fully customizable, so they can show things like a thumbs up or a pedestrian crossing symbol. Look at that, we've got a thumbs up right now. That is so interesting. Yep, there we go. Look, it's literally a running animation, that's incredible. And look at that, you can have custom messages on the side of the car. <laughs> that is incredible. If I wanted to just shut your door a little bit, I could just close it just a wee bit. Oh, that's cool. It's the same with the with the windows as well, so I can just open yours just a little bit. So never would I have guessed this in a million years, but this is actually a full production car in China right now, and it's coming to the UK in about a year. Check this out, guys. First time seeing the new M3 CS in person, which ups the power to 543 horsepower, the same as the M4 CSL, and also drops 75 pounds off its curb weight. Pretty cool color scheme, and I really like that two-tone hood design. Got to see this go up the hill earlier yesterday. What do you guys think? I love what they've done with the new generation interiors with the curved display. It looks so much higher end than the kind of tacked on screen and the instrument cluster. And look how gorgeous these bucket seats are with this perforation with the little red accents. That is awesome. A little center console, all in carbon fiber. Well, I have absolutely no idea what's going on right here, but I'm guessing it's some fully autonomous plant growing machine. <laughs> that is wild. Well, I've never seen anything like this in my entire life. It's a Porsche 919 Snowcat. Look at the, I mean, what? I'm not actually sure if this is fully functional. I'm guessing not, but this is one of the most ridiculous things I have ever seen. I actually think it is functional. What on earth? Yep, this thing actually functions. That is insane. Well guys, there is still so much left to see at Goodwood Festival of Speed, but I am going to leave that for the next video. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Like always, please browse the channel and subscribe. I look forward to seeing you next video. No!